Hi, in this video I'm going to use TouchOSC Editor to set up um, an interface screen for use with um, Sonic Pi. When you start up the editor, um, the first thing you have to do is to decide what size you want the screen to be. I'm going to set it up for use with my iPad and I'm going to leave it in vertical orientation. Um, Underneath that, there is a box that says name, which at the moment has got one in it, and that's because it's possible to um, have more than one screen, which you can switch between using this gray area at the top. And if I was to right click on that, you could see that we could add a page if I wanted to have more than one. But in fact, we just want a simple one here, so I'm not going to do that. But what we can do is to give a name to this page, and I'm simply going to call it test, and then click away from here to, to um, put that in place. Underneath that there is a button which allows you to control the interaction uh, with any of the um, objects which you place on this screen and I want on this um, interface to do everything using OSC messaging so I'm going to leave that on OSC and uh, we're now in a position where we can actually start putting some uh, items on the screen. To do that we simply right click and we choose what we want. I'm going to start off with a horizontal label which comes up here with the default uh, text label 1 which we can see is set down here and I'm going to change that to read touch OSC and Sonic Pi 3 like that. Uh, you'll notice nothing actually happens until I click away in another box when that will actually update the text on the screen here and it's obviously not big enough to read but I also want it to be a bit uh, bigger than that so I'm going to set the size of it up to 18 and I'm then going to uh, use the um, handles on the edge of the box to make that a bit bigger uh, there we are we'll put it more or less in the middle of the screen and I'm also going to change the color of it to yellow which stands out a bit better. So if we click away from that, that's going to be our label in the centre of the screen. It's not quite centred. What we can do is to click on it again and then to right click, uh, sorry, to right click on it and to choose uh, centre horizontally and that will then move it there so it's actually in the centre of the screen. So that's the first item. Uh, we're not going to actually change that in any way, so that's finished with. Uh, we'll click away from it. And the next item I'm going to put on, if I right click over here, is a push button, uh, which appears just as a small rectangle. And the default size is fine, and also red will be fine as a color. So I'm just going to leave that there, perhaps move it a little further in to about there. And you'll see that that by default has been named push one, which is fine. We'll leave that. But notice also that in this section down here, which says OSC, at the moment it's got the word auto on it, which means that it's automatically going to generate the address by which we um, refer to this button. The OSC address is going to be slash test slash push one. And that's fine. The slash test shows us it's going to be on page one and push one is going to be the unique name of this object on the page. Uh, we have two values associated with the two states of this button when it is not pushed and when it is pushed and naught and one are fine for that too so i'm actually going to leave that like that and that is finished so we can click away from that the next item we're going to put on in the center of the screen here i'm going to right click and choose a um, vertical fader which is going to go there we're actually going to make it a little bit bigger i think um, something like that will do and um, we are going to also um, we'll leave the default name fader one which is fine it's indicative of what it does but if we were to change that and then update it, it would it would update down here as well but fader one is going to be fine um, it's going to have now I want this to be able to increase or to decrease uh, the frequency of a note and so I'm going to change the range to be from minus one to plus one and I know from having tried this before that it's actually going to have these the wrong way up. I want the plus one to be at the top and the minus one to be at the bottom. So I'm going to press invert to, to do that as well. And we're also going to start off with it being centered so that it will go from naught in the middle up to one at the top and down to minus one at the bottom. If you get these wrong, you simply come back here and you remove the inversion or you just swap over the minus one and the one there. 
And so that's that second um, item. We'll tidy up its position on the screen in a minute when we've added the third one over here. I'm going to right click over there and the final item I'm going to choose is going to be a toggle button. And um, we're going now to actually, let's just try and uh, tidy these up a little bit. If I just draw a box to select those three items and then right click on any of them, I'm going to choose um, a line top and that's going to align the top edges of those. And while they're also uh, there, I'm going to choose um, down here, oops, I'm going to choose distribute um, horizontally and that will place the slider in the middle of those sections and um, we can, um, we'll just manually I think just make that look roughly in the middle, that, that's not too bad as, as a layout. So we've got our things nicely positioned. Let's come back to this uh, button here, you'll notice the difference is that it's just showing an outline and also that it is not showing the colour in the middle. We'll leave the default colour at red. Um, it's just an added complication to add it. We could add it in if we want. Now, this button here, if I click on it, you can see it's been uh, given the default name Toggle 1. Toggle means it's a button that switches, is normally off. You press it and it stays on. You press it again and it goes off. And the value range it's going to go to is naught when it's off and 1 when it's on. And the OSC address of that is going to be t slash test slash toggle 1. And that's um, all we want to do except for the... Uh, yes, that, that's all that we need to do. And that's really all I'm going to put on our simple interface here. And so we're now going to um, save this. And we're going to give it a name. And I'm going to call it um, Tester1. And we're going to click the Save button there. And that saves it, in fact, on my um, machine. If I come down to the uh, Documents folder, let's do a new Finder window, and come down to the Documents folder. In there, there is a folder which says somewhere Touch OSC. There it is. I've got it on um, the... the uh, last use so touch osc there and these are all lots of different ones which i've predefined already and down here you can see the file tester.touchosc which is the file that we've just um, defined if you want to share this with anybody for example um, you could do this let's just open that with um, a program which i've got on here which is um, a text editor called uh, BB Edit. I'm going to open it with that and here it is and you'll see that when it opens it uh, tester.touchos is actually um, a zip file and inside it it's got a page called index.html and that is purely text and you can share that file if you want with anybody else. When they get it they can compress it or zip it and then rename the final file back as tester.touchosc, which can then be loaded into um, your iPad or your Android, depending upon what you're connecting here to. Um, and to do that, you would take the file and you can add it to an existing um, folder, um, touchosc, on the machine where your editor is. So that sets it up. And the next thing we need to do is to um, transfer this to the iPad and I'll start that off in the second video. Thanks for watching.